2008 Jeep Compass. It had a reaction when painting, and this is because of the primer. It's just not a good primer. The bumper is not good on the E coat, so it reacted to the paint. And now we are going to remove it with 400 DA. 400 DA. All right. We're gonna completely bald it and then we're gonna prime over it very gently and it's gonna cover this entire thing up and that'll just repaint it perfectly. Yeah, that should be it. <laughs> Easy. Just gonna do it for a while, knock all this off. Why are you going in circles? Uh, I mean, really, you can do crisscross motions, you can do circular motions. Ultimately, it just depends on who's doing it. Uh, the only thing you don't want to really do is go on, a, on, a, oh, right, okay. on an incline, only because you don't want to dig too deep and end up damaging the actual bumper. Keep That's the pad flat. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to keep it as flat as possible, where okay. it's a little difficult on these curves right here. So when it comes to these curves, I might actually have to do it by hand. Okay. Or I could actually go on an incline here, be very gentle, but I don't want to accidentally burn this edge clean off. So I'm just going to play it safe. Do circular motions or crisscross all here, and then eventually once it gets here, I'll probably switch over by hand and just gently hit it with a three, three eighty or three twenty. It should flash right off really quickly. Okay. So. <laughs> Why are you changing the pad out? The reason I'm changing the pad out is because these pads, uh, they burn out really easily, so you lose a lot of the grit. So realistically, all I'm doing is smearing at this point. There's no more oh, friction, okay. so it's not actually sanding down anymore. So I have to try to change these out as often as I can. Gotcha. I try not so hard to, to lean it, but sometimes with these really sharp curves, you kind of have to. But as long as I'm not putting too much pressure on the lean, it's not going to dig into it. Um, this is usually mostly an issue with other items, but this is such a flat surface, you can actually kind of dig a little bit. Yeah, that's more of like pinpoint pressure. Uh, which typically I don't recommend you do, but since this is such a flat surface and we're not actually digging into the bumper itself, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to prime over this anyways and I'm going to make a whole new foundation here, so it's going to get covered up regardless. Do you have to remove this right here? No. These squiggly lines, like I said, once I put the primer on it, I'm going to cake it. You're not going to see any of this anymore. It's going to be pure white and they're going to be able to take it to the paint booth, redo it again, and it should come out perfect this time. So all we have left is really right here, okay. and then right here. Yeah. What about the edge? Uh, this here, I'm gonna hit it probably by hand, only because I don't think it's gonna get it. Okay. Yeah. There's like a kind of a crevice or something, so I'm just gonna do it by hand. It's just right What's up? Do it by hand. Yeah, so here I can I can hit this flat piece, but here I'm gonna have to probably do it by hand.
wanna burn this head. Okay, so yeah, it is knocking it off. Um, you can't wet sand it, so this doesn't happen. What grit is that? This is a 400 grit. Originally, I was gonna go with a 320, but 320 leaves way too many scratch marks, as you can tell. I mean, you can still fix this by just hitting it with a 400 and a 600. You're just building it up. You're gonna smooth this out. But uh, I think dry sanding it is not the right way to go, only because it's smearing the paper, so it makes it a lot harder for for me to you know sand down consistently. But we'll just keep keep at it for now. Yeah, it turns out. If I have to, I'll switch over to wet sanding it. Yeah, so trying to get in that crevice right here is kind of uh, a little difficult. But. Yeah, it's leaving scratch marks, but I'm gonna go over it again with the 600 rough anyways, smooth this out. Because if I were to prime over this, you're gonna see all these scratch marks, and that's not what you want. So. switch over to wet sand because it's drying out my paper way too fast. Okay. I like doing it with water is only because you won't get that like grit. It won't stick to the sandpaper since it's very wet. So watch what so I can come up. So I hit it. So you see how it just knocks it right off? It still keeps the grit without it smearing on the actual part. So you get the same result if you dry sand it with sand. Only difference is that if you keep dry sanding it, it's gonna smear the paper a lot faster and you're gonna have to keep swapping out paper, which I don't recommend. So wet sanding it is. And do you wanna just do this real quick and then get the rid of the scratches that way I can just stop? Yeah, just hit it with a wet water thing. Okay. Can we do circular motions or crisscross? And I'm trying not to push too much pressure on my fingertips only because I don't wanna dig. You typically you wouldn't do this with a card or some kind of flat surface. But it's okay. Well, it's slide for now. So, click. So now we're actually starting to get deeper into it. But try it. So you can still see the scratches, but the primer's gonna cover all that up anyways. But it's a lot better than before. So this this is basically done, except for down here. So now we're just gonna prime over uh, the area you scuffed, right? Yes. So I'm gonna hit it with the primer very lightly. The only reason I'm not gonna do it very heavy first coat is because I don't want it to react again. Typically when parts are already painted, uh, it's a lot more easier to get a reaction out of it. So this is something that's gonna take time, but just very gentle uh, one layer coats. Okay. And then I'm just gonna cake on over time maybe about an hour. So you let it dry in an hour and then spray another layer? Well, no. Once you prime it about one time, right, with a very thin coat, you give it about maybe three, four minutes, three, four minutes. Not too long. Typically I let it, I won't give it that much time, but that's only with parts that aren't painted already. Right. I don't want to, I don't want a reaction, so I don't want to have to, I don't want to cracks, you know, because if it cracks, it's going to Yeah, on this one, so in this one, you're going to light coat and you're going to wait how long? About three or four minutes. Three, and then four I'm going to hit it again. Hit it again. Yeah. And these light coats are just going to keep caking on. Eventually it'll cake and this will be completely snow white. All right, so we'll start off. And I'm also staying kind of further back. Typically I get a lot closer, but I don't want to uh, overdo it and spray somewhere too much. So I'm doing very far away. Just like that. That's the first coat. First coat. So we're gonna hit the 
second, second coat. coat of primer. Okay. Yep. Hey guys, I do want to thank you again for watching our great videos. If you guys need any parts for your vehicle, the ones that you guys see in our videos, or anything else, go to RevMoto.com, your prepaid auto body parts source. We sell bumpers, taillights, headlights, uh, touch-up bottles, everything that you need for your vehicle, go to RevMoto.com, your prepainted and accessories parts store. Also, go ahead and like, subscribe, and turn on your push notification for more great videos like this one. Thank you.